everyone welcome to the another episode of ecom stories with raja my name is raja and i am the show host for this particular show uh, i'm also the ceo of ecommanagers.com ecom managers is basically a full stack full stack a to z amazon account manager providing company uh, today i have an amazing guest with me uh, he's itself a uh, amazon seller he is also giving consultation to the different uh, seven eight and nine figure amazon sellers as well uh, he's also the co-founder of uh, of a seller tool uh, called like seller.tools he's also the uh, founder of amazon fba king uh, the facebook group uh, please welcome the one and only troy hey troy how are you hey doing great doing great thanks so much for having me on yeah first of all i would like to thank you like it's really an honor you come to the show and uh, hopefully uh, like the content of this particular video will uh, give a re- uh, give a really uh, an amazing value to the uh, to the participants or to the uh, to the listener of this particular show so our topic is that uh, like how we're going to build a business from scratch to 6 7 and 8 figures and uh, like what are the, your top 3 main strategies but before going to that particular topic uh, like uh, we would like to uh, listen like who you are where are you actually coming from and how did you get get into the amazon business and uh, what are your future plans so a uh, summary for that particular thing my name is troy johnson um, i started selling uh, on amazon uh, fba uh, late 2014 uh, early 2015 so now uh, quite some time uh, relatively speaking um but spent spent some time building uh, at that time kind of a single brand uh, built it uh, scaled it and then sold it um and moved on from that to more actively consulting for uh higher revenue high volume clients and pretty um pretty competitive uh categories um which uh which was great they were really really looking for some of the same insights uh from the brands that I was building at the time and, and was and was selling and uh from there then moved on to um the SaaS side of things with seller.tools and where we now develop uh different features different tools for sellers that are looking for kind of an advantage uh even in an all in one suite what's going to help you um rank easier on Amazon get more reviews that's our focus what's the most important things you should be focusing on in an FBA business and how do we automate it how do we make it uh, easy for sellers at all levels to do that in an exceptional fashion just a, a clear competitive advantage so Uh that's my main focus today still running a few brands still advising um but we were really excited about what we're doing to it at uh at Solidot Tools. Yeah that's really awesome that's really awesome. So right now your main focus is related to the consultation right? Uh to a, to a degree to a degree. We've started some new brands and that's that's taken some of my time as well. Um but it can be kind of a week to week thing. Sometimes when you're you know when you're giving direction or advising a brand it can be really intense. um initially and then it can kind of be well here you go now you have all the insight direction that you need uh utilize your team and resources to go and and implement some of these strategies so uh with with what i do with seller tools and with the aim to automation it's it's really all about how you remove those types of bottlenecks in your businesses as well so um i really try to have that show up when i give any sort of direction to brand owners or sellers is you know you really Yes, it's great to spend a lot of time, effort, and energy on high value activity, so making sure that the focus is there. Uh, but then you want to build in the systems to where there's predictability and you can leverage tools and you can automate some of those strategies um to where eventually your time tapers off but your results still remain, you know, quite high. You're getting those reviews, you're ranking for your most important keywords, that being the focus. yeah uh, i actually uh, uh, one question actually came into my mind as well uh, like that is quite uh, beside our topic like what do you think uh, is the future of amazon is only based on the automations like on the tools and the softwares or is uh, like that is on the base of uh, manual work or human human work or the combination of both things i think it's going to be a bit of a combination it'll be really interesting to see um how amazon continues to develop more solutions uh sort of native solutions um as we've seen with amazon ppc the different ad types um greater reporting uh yeah. they're they're really kind of building their own um and campaign you know within seller central it's become far easier to manage a lot of your ppc but it's just become very diverse 
Um, yeah. And then we bring in things like DSP and other, you know, other um, ways of, of running Amazon ads and getting in those types of insights. So I think it's going to really evolve and change, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be more tools will be integral. It's a measure of, you know, how much automation is there or how much is having a subject matter expert utilize those tools. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's going to be really Really interesting. Tools will be integral. I think that will be a given. It's just a matter of how how big does Amazon become where their own tools and their own data, things like brand analytics, uh, become immensely valuable. And then it's how are you utilizing them? How are you using your people, your processes to take full advantage of, of what's available to you? And if you wanted to give a percentage like uh, uh, like 50% to the tools and 50% to the human or like uh, more or less? I, I would put it at more of a, I would even say like an 80, 20, you know, 80% on the tools and then 20% of the, the people. And you have to think of the advantages of that too, right? Cause tools are meant to give you predictable outcomes and it removes human error, human delays, things that you want to mitigate. And also just the general expense, you know, if you're hiring an employee, that's 35, $40,000 a year, and you use a tool that costs you 70, hundred dollars a month you have an immense cost savings for potentially some of the same outcomes. So being able to selectively add the people power, the bandwidth behind those tools, I think is going to be uh, what we continue to see being really effective. These hyper growth brands, they don't have a lot of bottlenecks and people in the business that are slowing things down. They are focusing on the most important activities, aiming to automate those, and then adding in people to scale. Um, and that's, that's just a really effective model. And that's, that's the beauty of FBA, right? Where we're utilizing Amazon. We know the leverage. We know we send a product to a fulfillment center. We can tap into hundreds of thousands, millions of customers instantly, and our product can get to them in two days. Mm -hmm. So the system is already, there's a lot of predictable elements. Mm -hmm. Um, but then it's just a matter of, like I said, ranking, ranking and reviews. Mm -hmm. We know, we know how powerful the system is. Mm -hmm. What does it reward? How do we put a disproportionate amount of investment in those areas? Awesome. Now let's come to our uh, main topic. That is like, what are the, your top three strategies uh, to build a business from zero to uh, six figures or seven figure? And uh, what do you think? Like, what are the top three most important things we need to be take care of when we are starting Amazon and building Amazon? Yeah, if I, if I had to think of three things, the, the starting place absolutely has to be an exceptional product. I think this is often overlooked, and it's and it's where customer or sellers spend a, a good amount of time. And sometimes, you know, the 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 analysis paralysis and 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 don't move forward uh, with maybe potential products they can bring to market. Um, and and some of that is is to be expected, but it's such a crucial piece, right? Is having an exceptional product that has the right numbers, that has a clear audience that you can uh, bring to market and, and exploit a competitive advantage. So that absolutely has to be your starting place. And if you sell a commoditized product, if you're truly white labeling, putting a sticker over a product that you know your competitors are selling the same thing, is having a roadmap of how you're differentiating it. You know, what is your USPs? What are you doing different? What value what, add are you providing? What is your value addition in that particular product? Right. Yeah. Answering that, that type of question. What, what is it that you're truly doing different to where it's not a commoditized product? If you're literally, you've got five competitors, you're all literally selling the same thing. Um, not to say we, we haven't gotten into some of those categories, but we have a roadmap that says, okay, we may be selling the same thing, but we do optimization better. We do audience building better. We run, you know, many chat specific strategies, let's say, or we have, uh, Amazon PPC, uh, dialed in in such a way that we we have a competitive advantages a com com competitive advantages that we can exploit even with a commoditized product, but you really have to know your stuff if you're going to do that. Um, and so that should really be the exception, I think, and not the rule. Is a differentiated, high quality product that needs to be your your foundation. That is right? the first thing. Like we need to have a very unique and a high definition product. Uh, plus we need to add some kind of value in our product, which actually make us differentiate from our competitor. Like I think so everyone is buying the product from China and maybe the most of the suppliers are same. Like we are competing in the Amazon, but our supplier is same. So what is the difference? How are we gonna capture the market share? So the very first point is that like uh, we need to have a very 
exceptional unique product and the product which actually contains some value added so what is the uh, second thing or second strategy like uh, in the in the business of six to seven people the second would be optimization it would be truly getting right um what you have to work with for visibility traffic and conversions on amazon the only uh, typically the only way somebody interacts with your products on amazon is through a your product detail page mm -hmm. now you have different ads that you can serve up various various touch points that you can um, you can realize if you pay to play but ultimately where a customer finds your product clicks add to cart and purchases it is it on your product detail page mm -hmm. and it's really crucial to get that optimization right and that brings us to things like keywords Mm -hmm. um, your, um, branded touch points. So your, your, uh, imagery, your mm -hmm. videos, your EBC, all of that done right and dialed in to where, when you realize that traffic element that you are truly conversion ready. And so overlook, overlooking the optimization piece is, is, is a big one. Cause we see a lot of sellers kind of going through the same motions, you know, maybe they fall on a course, a program, or even, even a tool, and they're being taught to go through these same exact steps. And you can see if they do that, essentially these first two steps, they're selling the same product as everyone else. And then they're optimizing it like everyone else. And then they're disappointed when they realize they have no competitive advantage, right? It's very much groupthink, herd mentality. Like there's no reason to expect that you would win. So starting from a place of a high quality differentiated product and then getting the optimization right where you're doing something different or exceptional to some degree. So you're folding in brand analytics, you're doing keyword research in a more advanced uh, and more advanced way. You have compelling copy with your optimization on your product detail page. You have elevated branded assets to where even though you're a brand new brand, you can, uh, you have the perception, the customer perception that you are quality, that you're an authentic product, that there's trust that's built in there where your optimization, your product detail page is truly, truly elevated. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it means that like first we need to have an a very amazing and stunning product, and the second thing is actually related to the our presentation, like how we're gonna present that particular product in the front of our potential customers or potential shoppers. So for that purpose, like we need to have a stunning listing, and uh, we need to write a proper and in depth and detailed uh converting ad copy as well we need to make sure that like our images should be up to the mark high definition and all kind of the things we need to make sure that like our abc uh like the previously known as abc now it's a plus content manager so mm -hmm. that should be uh looks really awesome so the second step is that like how we're gonna uh present that particular product in front of our production budget so what will be the third strategy or what will be the third step which we need to take care on when we are building a six seven figure amazon business competitive advantage is in terms of your strategy it should focus purely on ranking and reviews that is the 80 20 of winning on amazon and you need to go to great depths. So there are two that are my favorite. So I'm, I'm gonna kind of like three, three A and three D. Um, it's many chat and many chats immensely effective for chat marketing to where we can engage our customers, we can build loyalty, support them, but obviously we can deploy strategies where we can more easily rank our products, more easily request and capture reviews. And many chat gives us a lot of predictability. And this is again, where we bring it back into tools, we bring it into automation. Uh, we do really cool things where even a customer is supporting themselves, which is, um, which is like automation on steroids, right? Where a, a customer, if they have an issue, instead of leaving a negative review, which you have to manage and mitigate and get more positive reviews, they support themselves. We can have them send themselves a free product if it mitigates the issue. Uh, mini chat just opens up a, a whole world of potential. There's just so much that you can do. And often we see sellers so intimidated by the uh, potential that they, they aren't willing to even scratch the surface, um, which is bittersweet, right? We'd love to see more as tool providers. We'd love to see more sellers utilizing it. But if we're competitors in that category, we love the idea of them not utilizing the tools that they're, you know, at their, uh, at their disposal. Um, but you've got to go to depths there. This is really what you should be spending a disproportionate amount of, of time on. Uh, when you ask an Amazon seller, what makes up your day, it needs to be Inventory readiness, so ma making sure you have units to sell, can't generate revenue without that. And then it needs to be ranking and reviews. And everything else almost becomes details. It, it's it's um, inconsequential unless you are getting page one visibility and generating more sales and getting more reviews so the social proof, the conversion readiness is there. And it, it really needs to be obsessive. So that's kind of my 3A. And then the 3B would be where we're spending time and brands that we're uh, working on and looking at is... Um, 
uh, things like DSP, um, Am Am Amazon advertising uh, types that are giving us uh, things like audio, giving us unique creative um, that we can really go to to, to greater depths on. Um, and uh, yeah, we're utilizing that to, to, to great effect. But ultimately, that third piece is where are you spending a, a disproportionate amount of time where you're going into greater depth, this is, I think, a, a thing that sellers have a, a kind of a challenge with is a little bit of the shiny object syndrome, a little bit of FOMO of where they feel like they have to go really wide and be okay at a lot of things. But if you were exceptional at Minichat, if you were exceptional at Amazon DSP or even Amazon PPC, we'll, we'll generalize it to Amazon PPC, um, most categories, you will absolutely excel. You will be a top competitor for the most important keywords. So those are the two areas that we're even focusing on. Um, but it, it really is, it implies the depth that you're going, where you're really trying to be a subject matter expert. You're spending most of your days in, uh, in those areas um, and not chasing anything that's, you know, that's new or, uh, or different. Most of the tools are, you know, the, the reason we have eight and nine figure sellers isn't because there's something out there that's yet to, to be available. All the tools are available right now. That's mm -hmm. how they're able to realize that, top line number and, you know, seven figures in profit, even, um, seven, eight figures in profit. So that would be my, my third piece is a subject ranking and review focused. And those tactically are the things that we're focusing on things like mini chat and DSP really, uh, blow up some brands. Yeah. Uh, that's really awesome. So just as for the revision, uh, like the top three strategies are number one is that like, we need to have a very unique and stunning product with us, uh, like uh, a product which actually creates a value in the, in the life of that particular shopper. And uh, the second thing is, is actually re uh, related to the presentation of that particular product. Like how we're going to uh, list that particular product, how we're going to give a feel to that particular customer who's going to buy that particular product with the information stuff like that and the third thing is actually related to the ranking and the reviews like how we're going to rank that particular product and uh, reviews are one of the most important things uh, these three strategies actually uh, extracting some uh, some more questions in my mind as well like uh, what kind of characteristics a stunning product should have uh, like how we gonna write a uh, awesome content or how we're going to create an, uh, and a top converting listing uh, and how we're going to get more and more reviews and how we're going to rank and index. So hopefully uh, we would like to arrange uh, some more episodes with you. So where we will talk about uh, these particular things separately. So that content can, can actually help to the, uh, to the new Amazon sellers. Like there are a the lot of new, like, um, Yesterday, I think so. I uh, receive an email like more than 3,500 uh, person are, are on the daily basis actually starting selling on Amazon. So they actually need a lot of information, like how we're going to make that particular things. So hopefully this particular content can help them as well. At the end, uh, like uh, Troy, thank you so much for uh, coming on the on the show. And hopefully we will arrange uh, some more episodes for the Amazon sellers and help them as much as we can. And uh, that's all for today. And uh, talk to you soon. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. Look forward to chatting about it more. <laughs> sure. Sure thing. Sure thing. Uh, bye, everyone. And it's an over and out.